This is part 39 of WCF video series. Many of you have posted these questions about pair session WCF services. So I thought I'll record this video to clarify these questions. This is continuation to part 38. So please watch part 38 before proceeding. Let's look at these questions one by one. Do all bindings support sessions? The answer is no. Not all bindings support sessions. For example, basic HTTP binding does not support session. If the binding does not support session, then the service behaves as a pair call service. Let's look at this with an example. Let's flip to Visual Studio. We'll be working with the same example that we worked with in the previous session. So notice that at the moment, we're using net TCP binding. The service host is already running. So let's go ahead and run the Windows client that we have built. And when we click Invoke Service, okay, number is 1. And when we click again, number is 2. So, you know, net TCP binding supports sessions. And so this is behaving as a pair session WCF service because we configured the service as a pair session service. Now let's change the binding to basic HTTP binding within the WCF service. So here we are using net TCP binding. Let's change it to basic HTTP binding. Save the changes. Let's close the client and the service host that are running. And then let's rerun the service host. Okay, so the service host is started. Let's go to the client application. Let's actually delete this service reference. And let's add a reference to our service. So this should discover our simple service. So let's specify the namespace as simple service. Click OK. So now, if you look at the client's application configuration file, it should be using basic HTTP binding. All right, let's go ahead and run our client and then click this button and see if it remembers state between calls. Look at that. No matter how many times we click, you know, the number is always one. So it's not remembering the state. So in spite of configuring our WCF service as a pair session service, since the binding you know, doesn't support session, you know, the service is going to behave as a per call service, not as per session service. So the straight answer to this question, does all binding support sessions? No, not all binding support sessions. If the binding does not support a session, then the service behaves as per call service in spite of having it configured as per session WCF service. All right. Now, how to control the WCF service session timeout? So this is another question posted by our YouTube subscribers. We know that the default session timeout is 10 minutes, but if we want to increase or decrease the default timeout value, then how do we do that? Basically, all we need to do is set the receive timeout attribute um, you know, of the respective binding element. Um, let's actually flip to our simple service, and let's change this back to net TCP binding. Now, we want to control the session timeout. Let's actually, um, you know, specify the session timeout as, let's say, 10 seconds. And in order to do that, directly under the system.service-model element, you know, use the bindings element. And what binding is this? This is net TCP binding. So let's specify the binding is net TCP binding. And then here, we specify receive timeout. And we specify that in hours, minutes, and seconds. So we want 10 seconds as the receive timeout. And let's give this binding configuration a name so that we can associate that with an endpoint. So let's call this net TCP and then associate this with this endpoint. And how do we do that? Uh, using binding configuration attribute. So we specify that name right here. Okay. So at this point, you know, the receive timeout is 10 seconds. So the service instance object will be remained remaining on the server memory only for 10 seconds. After 10 seconds, it will be, you know, removed from the memory. 
okay uh, let's actually close the client and the WCF service that are running let's go ahead and run our WCF service so the host has started and since we have changed the binding let's actually delete this and add a service reference So now we are using TCP binding which supports sessions and we have set the session timeout to 10 seconds. So simple service is the namespace. Let's click OK. All right, let's go ahead and run the client. Now when we click invoke service, so number is 1, click it again, number is 2. Now if we wait you know for 10 seconds what's going to happen you know the session is going to time out and then when the client makes a request we no longer have the service instance object on the uh, WCF server memory okay so obviously there will be an exception thrown so I think it's you know 10 seconds now let's actually click this button and see what happens look at that it says the, connect, the socket connection was aborted. This could be caused by an error processing your message or a receive timeout being exceeded by the remote host. So obviously we have set the receive timeout as 10 seconds and we have exceeded that and that's why we have this exception. So how to control the WCF service session timeout? You know we use the receive timeout attribute on the respective binding element. So what happens when the session timeout is reached? When the session timeout is reached, the connection to the WCF service is closed. As a result, the communication channel between the client and the WCF service gets faulted. Okay? And the client can no longer use the same pro uh, proxy instance to communicate with the service. This also means that, you know, along with the session, any data that is stored within the service object is also lost okay so this client basically lost you know the number which was stored you know within the service instance object on the server memory along with you know the session right so obviously after the session has timed out on the first attempt you have noticed that we got this error the socket connection was aborted now if I click the button once again look at that I get a different error so now it says the communication object system dot service model you know channels dot service channel cannot be used for communication because it's in faulted state okay so obviously the next question is how to fix the communication channel is in a faulted state exception you know all we need to do is put the line that calls the service method within a try block and if at all if there is an exception you know we know that there's going to be a communication exception so if you look at the first exception this is a communication exception so we are handling that exception and then we check the client state okay is it faulted if it is faulted then we know you know the session has timed out existing session object will be lost and a new session you know we're going to create a new session by creating a new instance look at this here we are creating a new instance of the proxy class now here I'm using a string variable uh, basically to construct this message because I was not able to fit that on the screen but you know you know in an actual implementation we can directly pass that entire string to this show method as a parameter okay so we display that message and then immediately we create a new instance of um, you know the proxy class which is going to establish a new session with the WCF service okay so let's actually look at this in action and to speed things up I have already typed this so let's copy and paste that within our client application so here we have the form so double click on the form to get to the event handler and here let's paste that code okay so straightforward code it's the same uh, that we have discussed on the slides okay so let's go ahead and run this now so invoke service so number equals one number equals two now let's wait for 10 seconds so that the session gets timed out on you know once the session is timed out you know it will throw a communication exception and why is that because the channel is faulted and we try to use the same proxy instance you know we get an exception because we can no longer use it for communication you know when the channel is faulted so once I click this 
look at this session timed out your existing session data will be lost and a new session will be created once I click OK you know this piece of code gets executed which will create a new instance of uh, the proxy class a new session is established so now it works as expected again it's going to work for the next 10 seconds you know if you keep on making requests within 10 seconds it's going to work but then if you wait for 10 seconds what's going to happen you know you will get an exception and the sketch block is going to handle that and then create a new proxy okay but keep in mind your existing session data will be lost that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day